So let me open up about my deal. This is full disclosure. Okay, there are some big problems with YouTube. Are you watching any of these people? Hey everyone, me Kevin here. In this video, I'm going to break down multiple different catalysts as to why cryptocurrencies might be on the verge of exploding. So grab the link, take advantage of this. Don't pass it up. I'm telling you it's a game changer and I wanna see you 10X your income. I think it will be the next big thing for the world and for people who want to invest so they can multiply their money. So today I wanna to reveal the secret investing technique that 99% of people don't know about. So if you are, well, I am a little bit worried for you. Actually, I'm worried for society. Let me explain to you why I think you should make an effort to tell your friends and family to be careful absorbing information from these types of people. And before I start today, I just wanna to say thank you to Noah Bolterson, who is one of my subscribers. You always have great comments, you are a legend. Okay, now into today's video, payechli. Look, I get it. They have huge followings for a reason. They have catchy titles on their videos, they have big opinions, and they're excited all the time. Sometimes they even have magic tricks. Look, I don't wanna be cutting these people down, but look, I think someone needs to talk about their incentives. And I think before I talk about anyone else, I have to talk about myself first. See, YouTube literally pays me if more people watch my videos. So I have a strong incentive to try and get more views on my videos. So think about that for a moment. Every one of us financial YouTubers makes money if more people watch our videos. So to make more money, we need to get as many people as possible interested in our videos. Well, the vast majority of people want to get rich and want to get rich as fast as possible. So if I make content around getting rich fast, then that would appeal to more people than talking about how to look at a company and I say that it's overvalued and I'm waiting to, for a price that I'm willing to pay. This is not going to appeal to most people. But I would like more views, so I try and make things at least informative and interesting. But I'm not playing the game correctly according to YouTube. I'm not appealing to a wide audience. So I might make okay revenue from YouTube one day, but I'm not doing it right if it was all about the money. Now I'll actually finish the video by explaining why I make videos the way that I do. We'll get to that later. So when you watch or click on anything here on YouTube, we have to think about the incentives of the person. Should we believe this information about how to get rich fast? Should I actually buy this coin or should I buy the stock? Is it going to make me super rich? Well, you are here on my channel, so I guess you wouldn't fall for that. You think Dogecoin hitting 60 cents today is crazy? Wait till you hear this. Many analysts, including myself, believe that Doge has the potential to be equal with Ethereum. Hey guys, so if you're a Bitcoin investor, you should just be so excited. It's like um, everything that we've been waiting for is happening. Um, Elon Musk on Twitter. Dogecoin is blowing up. It's at 33 cents right now, and it's stabilizing around the 30 cent area. But I think Dogecoin is about to do something even greater. It's going to substantially multiply. Bitcoin is going to hit $100,000 minimum. And no, I don't mean in like five years from now or 10 years from now, by this time next year. Now I don't have TikTok, but I know these people are everywhere. This stuff could be complete garbage. We have no idea. And I think these people shoveling this have no idea either. They don't care because they make money on the views. If it's funny and exciting, well, that's what will get the views. So if someone is showing off their expensive car or showing you a magic trick or giving away cash prizes, well, that stuff is a hustle to be more entertaining and get more views. What does a magic trick have to do with your credibility of and your investment process? And why do they sit in front of expensive cars? Seriously? Well, I guess it is the comparison bias at work. You see this guy has an expensive car, you immediately associate that with success and therefore you want to be like this guy. You are comparing yourself with him before he has even said a word. It's a trick, simple as that. Actually, that goes with lots of things in life. Branded expensive things are quite idiotic when you think about it. A fancy watch, the best table at the restaurant, the most expensive bottle of wine, the designer handbag, fast red sports car, even a Tesla. These things show status. And status games are for what I think the weak-minded people. If these things hold importance to you, then you should think about why. Do you honestly really need that $5,000 watch? Well, of course not, but it makes you feel good. And that's the problem. Material things make you feel good. 
It's the whole inner scorecard, outer scorecard thing from Warren Buffett. You care more about how other people perceive you than what you really want. Now, I know there are extremes of this. I mean, we could just live like hippies where physical possessions mean nothing and it's all about the rainbows and the universe and the energy, but that's not reality either. I don't know, my practical brain tells me to find value in everything. So I see very low value in $5,000 watches and sports cars and boats. And I mean, if I get to a billion dollars, I can't imagine ever under any circumstances buying a Lamborghini or some sports car. I will buy the safest car that fits my family because I won't be buying a car until I have a family because that's pointless. That has the cheapest maintenance costs and is good on fuel. It'll most likely be white because that's easier to keep clean. And that's about it. I care zero about what anyone thinks of my car. It is a tool for me to move between places, that's it. Anyway, okay, I've lost direction on this video. Let me go back to the topic. Okay, incentives. Now, some people have win-win incentives and I think that is totally acceptable. For example, uh, Hamish Hodder, I'm sure he doesn't mind me discussing him. So I'm working my way through his course at the moment and I'm getting a lot of value out of it. Even though I have been investing for many years and I have an okay grasp on basic accounting, I'm picking up some things that have made the course really valuable. For example, how to find maintenance capital expenditures in an annual report. I didn't know exactly how to do that before he showed me. Now, I will use these things in the future to improve my style as well. And Hamish obviously makes money from this course. And fair enough, because it's a good quality course that will help you significantly more than the cost of the course. And this is a positive like win-win for the world. But when we're watching a video from some fake guru, well, that gives that person money through ad revenue on YouTube. And you are essentially encourage them to make more fake if anyone says that they can teach you how to make 15, 20, 100, 300% in a year, in a week, in a day, anything like that should run the other way. I have a friend who always tells me that if these people actually knew how to do this, they would never be telling anyone because they could do this for any length of time. They would be the richest people in the world. So it's a scam, simple as that. Actually, don't even open your mind to attempting to learn this stuff. It will actually mislead you and maybe even set you back in life. So I said earlier, I would tell you why I make videos on YouTube. And I can tell you now, it's not for the money. This is not a business. I actually only broke even on YouTube just recently because I have an editor helping me with these videos. Hi, Stepper. I mean, this isn't a business, so I didn't want to spend hours editing every video. I wouldn't enjoy that at all. Plus, I would have to learn how to edit videos and that's not very enticing for me. But now my revenue covers the cost, so that means I'm not going backwards anymore, so that's nice. Anyway, so if it's not a business, then what am I doing this for? Well, I'm not gonna tell you that I am all righteous and holy and I'm doing this to help the world or fight fake gurus. Nah, none of that. Honestly, I'm actually doing it for myself. So I see my YouTube channel essentially as my interactive filing cabinet. What I mean is, it's a place where I can put my thoughts together and store them. I also get feedback, whether my thoughts are on the right track or whether I miss something. That's why comments and criticism is super important. I need the criticism. A big reason I do this channel is to help me examine my thoughts. Now I started this channel nearly two years ago now and it was something to focus on during the pandemic when I was in lockdown. It was also to improve my speaking. I was quite, I'm quite a shy person. I still am quite shy, getting a little better through this. And I used to be a teacher and I had that like teaching itch to scratch. So initially that's why I started the channel but what I didn't expect or foresee was that I would learn so much more than I thought because I had to put in the effort to research and think about an idea all the way through. I had to structure out my thoughts and that made things clearer. I swear I have learned more in the past 18 months than I have in the previous 10 years. And that's not an over-exaggeration. See, I would hardly read a book a year. Now I read like multiple books at the same time and I'm constantly reading. I've started communicating with people far smarter than me about investing ideas and investing strategy. I used to have hardly anyone to talk to. Now I have this outlet. So the learning that I am getting is massive and it is a big driver for why I'm still doing these videos. And if my videos are helping others, well, that's just actually a nice byproduct of just doing what I think is right for me. Actually, that's the issue I have with many people in this space. It's a lack of integrity. Essentially, the most important value I live by is treat people the way you want to be treated. If I can follow that, and well, I should be happy, and I am happy. And once our integrity is damaged, well, that's a really hard thing to rebuild. Now, I'm not saying that I'm right or wrong here. 
But all of us financial people have our preferred broker. Mine is Interactive Brokers. But this wasn't because Interactive Brokers wanted to pay me for promoting them, not at all. Yes, now they have started paying me, but I was promoting them well before they reached out to me. See, what happened was about six years ago, I left Australia and I needed to close down all my accounts in Australia. I had a brokerage account in Australia called Halifax. Now, the reason I chose Halifax was because I was loving reading this stock newsletter once a week from a guy called Lance Spicer, a really smart guy, and he was a very engaging writer. He was recommending Halifax as the broker of choice for Australians, and he apparently was using it as well. Exactly the same as everyone on YouTube recommending a broker. Now, I think you can see where this is going. Now, I closed down my account and started looking for an alternative that would work for me in my new country, Georgia. I did a lot of work researching the best brokerage accounts that would be the safest for me. But unfortunately, about two, maybe three years ago, something shady was happening at Halifax and they essentially went bankrupt. My friends, my mum, my dad, were all reading this newsletter as well and had accounts with Halifax. Their money is still frozen and the lawyers are going to get a big piece of it. It's a complete mess. Now, the guy who was running the brokerage firm was maybe not even a bad guy, but probably over leveraged, or I think he was actually a bad guy. I, I don't really know for sure though. Anyway, now Lance Spicer, who had recommended to everyone in his newsletter that Halifax is the broker to go with, well, he didn't make a big deal out of it and just moved on with his newsletter and kept writing. Even though his subscribers were all in this terrible situation now because he recommended this broker. Now, personally, I lost complete trust in Lance Spicer because of this. His reputation in my eyes is now very low. I question his integrity. I know it wasn't his fault and it wasn't his business, but I now can't trust anything he says because I know he hasn't done the due diligence on the brokerage firm. Or worse, he might have been buddies with this shady guy from Halifax. Now anyway, back to YouTube. So I'm not saying the affiliate program is a bad thing. It can be a win-win. So let me open up about my deal. This is full disclosure. I have a deal with Interactive Brokers that they will pay me for every click on the link in my description. I didn't want to get paid if someone actually deposits money or opens an account because that might not be the best option for them. But to just go and check out Interactive Brokers, well, that seems like a win-win. Now with Hamish, well, Hamish and I have a deal that anyone uses a discount code of mine for his course, and he shares a bit of that sale with me. I am nearly finished the course myself, and I think it is a valuable course that I would stick my name to. There is no reputational risk here for me because the course is great. This is a simple win-win for everyone. But there is this huge reputational risk when I promote a brokerage platform like Interactive Brokers. I mean, if Interactive Brokers goes bankrupt, essentially that will hurt my reputation. I think the brokerage company that you use is just as important as the investment in the companies that you make. So I get very nervous when people are recommending brokerage platforms that haven't been around for a long time and are going to be now in control of these huge sums of money, but I don't know whether they have the experience to handle it. The YouTuber that comes to mind, well, one of the biggest YouTubers out there is Graham Stephan. Well, he promotes a brokerage company called Public, and he used to promote Weeble. And I know there are government agencies that background check these companies. I think it's called FINRA, but there are so many recent brokerage companies that are popping up all over the world. And I get nervous because how will they handle when the market crashes big time? How are they handling their finances? Are they using your money like a bank and loaning it out or investing it somewhere else? Well, that's what was happening at Halifax. Interactive Brokers is a public company. I can literally go and see all their audited documents. It's open to the public. Most brokerage businesses are not public companies though. I think what I'm trying to say here is, well, this essentially is a call to all YouTubers out there. Please, please investigate the company you are promoting on your channels. Just because they offer you money to promote their brokerage account or whatever it is, please make sure you are comfortable with the consequences and the reputational risk that you're getting yourself into. Okay, I'll stop now. If there's any indication that this video wasn't a complete waste of my time to put together, that would be greatly appreciated. And I think just remember about incentives and integrity. These things are really important and financial YouTube is full of misalignment and low integrity. Look, thanks for getting to the end. It does mean a lot to me and I'll see you in the next video.